Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Darkovica, that person that used to relor- relord, record and upload at regular intervals. No, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, I thought I'd upload a vlog that I could do to like bring you guys up to speed and just sort of do an update on where I've been for the past year, which is in pure chaos. <laughs> um, part of the stress of weddings, obviously, I think I've mentioned this before. I don't even know. I don't remember anything that I've done that I've recorded. Like, I don't remember half the stuff that I've recorded even before this year. It's it's a lot of expectations get put, for some reason, solely on the bride. I don't know why this is, but people just basically assume that everything will be done by the bride and no one else. And I don't do well with that kind of pressure. So it's it's been a year. Fortunately, Brent is exceptionally supportive of me. He is absolutely my rock and my stars and my everything. And I've never been more sure of marrying this man in my entire life. Literally, the only difficulties that I'm dealing with are just actually getting through the wedding. <laughs> um, it is incredibly stressful. And I, I it's like there's so much stuff involved with planning a wedding that people don't talk about because, I mean, like, you watch these TV shows and stuff and they're all dramatized, which I refuse. I refuse to watch anything to do with weddings. This is my only wedding in life. This is it. I'm done. It's never happening again. We're not renewing our vows. Like, none of that. This is, I'm done. <laughs> if I, if we do the renewal of the vows, I'm hiring a wedding planner because I'm never doing this again. I don't understand why anybody would do this for a living. God bless your inhuman soul because you can deal with God only knows how much stress. But, uh, yeah, I, I am absolutely, like, just very tired all the time. And, like, I get inspired at times to create something. And when I get home, I'm just so tired from, like, working full time and also, like, just constantly worried about the wedding that, like, I don't know, I get home and I just don't want to do anything. Like, literally, I think the only game that I've played this year is The Sims because for some reason it just gives me, like, an extreme release and I'm able to like concentrate and think so that's really nice like thank god for that so I have something that allows me to you know just kind of turn off while I play it and it's just sim stories like nothing really incredibly exciting has happened in my sims games I mostly just start new like a family and I play it all the way through I've had some emotional ones where like I legit cried <laughs> I got them to like adulthood and they died of old age and I was like oh my sims my children but yeah no that's that's basically it so I've I've been using the sims as a major release for stress um kind of putting my problems off until later not the best of ideas but you know whatever gets you through it and um yeah, that's that's been my year, basically. And on the side, I've been working on writing and I've hit a lot of personal issues with writing because as we all know, like my main thing that I wanted to do this year, apart from getting married, is write a book. And I'm realizing that a major, I mean, I've talked about this before and every time I mention it, it's because of like I've really thought about it and I'm realizing even more that it is a bigger issue is that like, the first stage of writing a book is the worst. It is the rough draft, and the rough draft sucks every time. If your rough draft is amazing, God bless you, but, like, no one else's is because it is the, it's the idea dump, and everything in the rough draft makes no sense. Even a world that you have carefully crafted suddenly starts showing you loopholes. Your story has loopholes. This plot that you thought sounded so great in your head is suddenly sounding flat, and the rough draft is easily one of the most demoralizing parts of writing your book because it is, because it is the first part, it is also the part where it sucks the most, and you think, God, no one would want to read this. Well, yes, duh, obviously. It's the rough draft. Nobody wants to read a rough draft. Everybody thinks they want to read your rough draft. Nobody wants to read a rough draft. It just sucks. So that's the one that you're supposed to keep to yourself. You're just supposed to write the damn thing. Get from start to end. Do not judge your story. Do not stop. Do not stop to ask for questions. Do not stop to correct anything. Even if you're like, man, I think I should have done this in this previous part of the story. Nah, fam, you don't go back. You make a little note that says, I'm now writing the story as if this happened instead, and you just keep going. Like, full speed ahead. Now, this is fantastic advice in practice. It, uh, excuse me. This is fantastic advice in, like, theory. In practice, hang on, let me get rid of this. In practice, it's the worst. Oh, my God. Go away. Sorry, windows are popping up on my screen. It is like, it's like telling someone, okay, 
don't free don't panic oh yeah let me just switch that off right no in in practice it's the hardest thing in the world because you hate it and you want to go back and edit it you know that your chapters before that part have like they're they're so full of plot holes and everything coming after it is going to be full of more plot holes because guess what you haven't filled those other plot holes so you want to go back but you'll never finish it if you do that because it's not a complete draft. You don't have the whole story in your head. So even if you go forward after fixing all of your plot holes, you're just going to make more plot holes and you're just going to have to go back anyways and do it again. So you make notes of things that are plot holes and you make notes of how you want to solve them and then you just keep writing. <laughs> and that's a great plan. I love it. I'm so glad I came up with it. I didn't. I can't do it. <laughs> it's way harder than it sounds. And like... <clears throat> My current rough draft, I have like sat and stared at it and had to like really wrestle with not going back. I have actually gone back and I edited like the first three chapters and I was like, what am I doing? I'm doing exactly what I'm not supposed to do, but I did it. And guess what? I have more plot holes and I have to go back. But yes, you know, so it doesn't really help. It doesn't fix anything to go back before your rough draft is finished. Anyways, sorry. That was a tangent. That one has like much more, con like my book writing thing has much more concrete issues that are m way smaller, whereas the wedding has issues and stress things that are like way bigger than me. And I feel like a lot of people have ways that they want to do their wedding and they have all these great ideas and all these like images for their wedding. And I just want none of that. <laughs> I'm so tired of people telling me what I should have done with my wedding. Like, okay, so let's be frank. Like I didn't do the same dress for all of my bridesmaids. I wanted my bridesmaids to come to this wedding feeling and looking fantastic. I have gotten so much flack for this everywhere because I didn't pick the same dress and because I want them to look good. And people are like, well, you're supposed to look good. It's your day. Fam, it is my day. Let me do what I want to freaking do. Okay. If I want my bridesmaids to look good, I want them to look good. I don't want my bridesmaids in ugly ass dresses so that when I look back at the photos, I'm like, ah, yes, this vain ass photo of me trying to be like, look how beautiful I am. I've put my bridesmaids in dresses that made them look like rocks. No. Okay. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to look back at my photos and go, look how beautiful everyone was. Like, that's what I want. <clears throat> Sorry. This is a, it's a point of, it's an issue for me. Um, and like, it's just been a lot of stuff like that. Like a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, your wedding is supposed to be like this. Yeah. If I'm following Vogue, which I'm not, I have sunflowers at my wedding. My wedding is fall themed. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to love it. I just, I wish people would, because everyone wants to tell you your wedding is all about you. It's all about what you want. And then you're like, oh, great. Yeah, I know. I want to do this. Oh, that's like, are you sure? Oh, yes. Thank you for going back on what you just said. Like, I get it. You have advice. If I wanted it, I would have asked for it. But anyways, everyone wants to give you advice on your wedding. When you're the girl, when you're the guy, everyone's like, oh, yeah, you're not doing much, are you? <laughs> you just got to show up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm laughing. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's I the, the social construct around weddings is bizarre. I want one. I want my wedding. <laughs> like, damn, I'm going to get married. I've wanted to find a person that I like me as a person growing up. I was I was always in love with the idea of finding someone that I was going to spend the rest of my life with and be really happy about it. And like, just, you know, live my life and, and have my husband and have my family. And just like, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. That's me. I don't care what anybody else wants. Me. <laughs> Um, and like, it's just, it's really weird to, to actually get to this point and have to fight so hard with what everybody else wants for your wedding. And you're just like, stop. <laughs> if I ask you, fantastic. Give me your opinions. And that, that is absolutely like some people in my life have been really good about that where they're like, well, what do you want them to wear? And I'll go, you know what? <laughs> I am like two months away and frankly, I don't have any opinions and I can barely breathe. What do you think? And they'll go, oh, I have these wonderful ideas. Like here's some photos. And I'm like, fabulous. Do that one. I like that one. That one makes me happy. Thank you for your input. Took a load off my back. And they're like, no problem. That's great. I love that. That's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the people who are like, tell me what you're going to do. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm really excited. They're like, are you sure? And you're like, hmm. It's not like I haven't thought about it, you know, every night and every day. No, yeah, I, Brent has been absolutely fantastic in keeping me from, like, losing my shit 
several times i have you know completely gone into an emotional wreck about this and it's it's not it's not that big a deal like i don't want to make it seem like i'm overly weak or emotional like i'm mostly just frustrated all the time because even it gets to a point where enough people say stuff to you where you're like well am, it was this a good idea like am i wanting the right thing is this going to show up the way that i see it in my head then you start doubting yourself and that's like the worst place to be with this sort of stuff you just don't want to doubt yourself don't do it you want it you want it shut up everybody needs to shut up and go sit in a corner um and like my matron of honor has been like just solid okay just like solid um and I have like really great people in my life and Brent has been helping me a lot like whenever I felt like I was overloaded he took all of the stuff off my plate and was like I'm gonna handle it like this is my duty now and I feel like that's also kind of sad because people are like oh you know the guy just has to show up and I mean like in this case that's not true either like it's not fair to him because he absolutely has been doing stuff with me and he has been planning stuff with me and <clears throat> I have a package anyways um <laughs> i yeah i mean like basically it's that's kind of it the other thing is y'all if you ever rsvp to a wedding put your damn name somewhere on that rsvp because i swear to god <laughs> i included envelopes i included postage i included the rsvp everything was like basically filled out all they needed to do was put their name on it because I, my hand hurt and I didn't want to write their names on it. I should have. I should have put their names on it. I <laughs> thought people would put their names on their RSVPs and they didn't. And I'm like, <laughs> I love you. It's like both sides too. It's like I've had friends that did that. I've had family that did that. And I'm like, y'all, how am I supposed to know who sent this back to me? So now we have like a survey monkey thing that we're sending out that people can answer questions on and like put how many people are coming thank god um because like i just don't know who's coming <laughs> i have numbers i we were planning to do like assigned seating and i was like oh well that's not a thing anymore if i just go off of this like but uh, i mean it's been like a really funny experience and it's been like a really stressful experience and i think it is important to take people's advice in and then just be like nah just be like all right cool thanks and then do what you want anyways um it's they're extremely stressful and they're extremely expensive like I got really lucky on a lot of stuff we went to downtown LA for flowers and let me tell you bomb decision like bomb decision <laughs> um and like the cake is gonna turn out really gorgeous I splurged a bit on the cake because I had some like ideas that I really wanted and when they came out with like how much it was gonna be I was like Ugh, fine I guess if I'm gonna go like super expensive on something I want my cake to look fabulous it's gonna look awesome I mean like there's like a lot of really upbeat stuff about it too which is partially why I wanted to talk about this I kind of needed some place to vent to where no one is interrupting me and telling me about how oh it's supposed to be like that that's my other least favorite thing when people are like when you're like man I'm really stressed out and people are like oh yeah it's supposed to be like that and you're like oh great thanks for minimalizing all of my stress and making me feel like it it's fine because I'm supposed to be that stressed like oh okay I guess I won't talk about it because like I'm supposed I'm where I'm supposed to be like great um and I think I don't know what it is I don't know if it's just that like in the past nobody talked about how how hard it is and then like people would just be like oh yeah you put together a pretty subpar wedding like neat and you'd be like oh wow gee thanks uh I think that's the other thing I'm like worried about but Brent is surprisingly like if our wedding is perfect I will be upset like it needs to be some things go wrong and like you know we don't know how to dance and it needs to be awkward and I'm like you know what bomb because that's what I want I don't want perfection I don't want the same dress I don't want you know like everyone just perfect on time you know drop of a dime like you know, everybody who's working for me, the photographer, the, the, the makeup artist, the, the hairstylist, like, they're all going to be able to eat at my wedding. Like, you know what? They're guests, too. Like, I just, nothing is perfect at my wedding. I don't want it to be perfect because that's boring, okay? A perfect wedding is boring. All my life, I have been absolutely the epitome of imperfect. I fell at my graduation on my face after smashing my head into the principal's face. During my eighth grade graduation, nearly slipped and fell off the stage because it was dewy and I was in heels and I don't wear heels. You know, like that sort of thing. Nothing major in my life has ever been perfect. And you know what? 
that's fantastic. That is perfection for me because that's characteristic of me. And I want to look like myself and I want to remember being myself at this wedding. So how are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm hoping once the wedding is over, everything is going to go back to normal and everything's going to be perfect. Overall, I am really excited for my wedding. I'm just like kind of over all of the stress and we're down to like the really nitpicky stuff that we have to finish and you know time's chugging forward it's funny every time I see a post that's like fall is coming I'm like you stop that not yet I'm not ready <laughs> um so that's like a really funny thing but <clears throat> yeah I I'm fine I'm fine overall like I am stressed and thankfully, Brent is there for me to vent to. And he really is just like my everything. Like, I have never been more sure in my life after this year that I want to marry him. Because he is just, he's just my happiness. And he's everything that I ever hoped that I would have in a partner. Imperfect and fun and willing to compromise and willing to have mistakes. Like, if something goes wrong at the wedding, I know he's not going to be upset. And as long as he's not upset, like, that's all that matters, right? Like, as long as he likes it. Who cares? Because <laughs> it's our wedding. Um, but anyways, yeah. So that's, it's been, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenging year. I haven't really gotten anything done, it feels like, sometimes. And I know that's not true. I've gotten a lot done. Um, and it sucks because I, I feel so upset that I'm not streaming and I'm not doing YouTube. And I miss doing it so much. And I, I realized I specifically miss doing YouTube. Like, I miss streaming, but I specifically miss being on YouTube. I, I don't know what it is. It might just be that I'm like a legacy YouTuber and nothing will ever be the same to me and I'm supporting a demon. But I, I really do just miss being on YouTube. Like without, and it's so hard because every time I, I do a, a video talking about like, oh, I'm only going to do this for myself. I'm only going to, you know what, I'm never going to make it. It's just a hobby now. Like that's fine. The problem is, is that like every time I upload without fail, I'm like, did people like it? Like, did people watch it? Like, what, what was the reception on this? Like, I'm so proud of it. Here's my child. Do you love it? And like, it's really hard to just stop caring about that because that was like why I did this in the first place, you know, like just to make people laugh. So I, I miss that a lot. And I don't know what I'm going to upload because I received a lot of games recently as gifts. Thank you, by the way. You guys are amazing. I got gifts from quite a few of you, especially on my birthday, which I am exceptionally appreciative of. I'm sorry I didn't do a birthday video. My birthday was like, I was like, I didn't even know what I wanted to do for my birthday. I was like, I don't want to do anything. Like I was in like a really bad, I was upset and I was like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to sleep. And uh, Brent took me to the Queen Mary, and that was, like, really cool. <laughs> and then we had fun joking about Snoop Dogg being there, because he was. They had a Snoop Dogg concert going on outside the Queen Mary. I know. For those don't know, that don't know, the Queen Mary is a really old cruise liner that is supposedly haunted. I say supposedly. I've seen stuff on there. I know it's haunted. Um, and it's, like, this massive ship. Cruise liners are even bigger now. But it's, like, this massive ship that also served during World War II. Uh, I think um, it served to uh, carry troops because it was the fast one of the fastest ships in the world and the enemy actually could not catch it. The only way that they could catch it was if they knew exactly where it was going to be at an exact point in time and they met it there <laughs> and they almost did that. Anyways, I'm going on a tangent. I'm sorry. I know lots of things. And every time I get on like on a subject, I'm like, oh, let me share with you my 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 knowledge that I love because I love learning. <clears throat> But long story short, we giggled because the idea of Snoop Dogg walking around on the Queen Mary with an EMF detector was just the funniest thing I've ever imagined in my life. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you so you could have that image too because it's freaking hysterical. Uh, and anyways, yeah, my birthday was like a much needed relaxing day and I just, we didn't film anything. We have like maybe four pictures of us and then like 20 pictures of the ship and uh it was just it was like a really nice day and I've needed more of those so like this year has been less on like capturing things and filming and more on just like trying to live to the next day <laughs> we're gonna have plenty of photos and video on our wedding day so you know I'll make up for it on that but I really am appreciative of all of the gifts that you guys have been sending me and I, I am very thankful for everything and I'm working on a couple projects in my spare time which is non-existent and uh, I have like an audiobook that I'm working through 
And I might start doing some videos with some comfort games before I start hitting those major games. Like I got gifted Resident Evil 2, which I am like ecstatic about because I wanted to do videos on that and I just never got around to buying the game. And um, I think on Twitter, you're called Tubby Church. And I could be wrong. I'm sorry. I'm really bad. You have like seven usernames. I'm sorry. Um, but you gifted me that and I am like really excited to bring that on the channel because I know it's going to be really funny for me to play Resident Evil 2. I've played the original one and it was like one of my favorite games. Um, and so I'm excited to play like the modern remake of it. Like that, that looked like such a great game to me. And Leon is also, you know, totes hot. Um, so yeah, so that's something that's on my plate. But until, until the wedding passes, I might put some of those off for a little bit and I might, you know, <clears throat> sit down and do some comfort things. Like <laughs> I am currently inspired to do some Sims Medieval videos, which I know I streamed the hell out of the Sims Medieval. I'm sorry. It just, it's like one of my favorite games and I freaking love it. And I, I don't know what about it makes it like the epitome of the best game ever. It just is. <laughs> I don't understand. I had another really cool model that I had written up for a video series I wanted to do, which was like a two hour Sims 4 story, which is I make a Sim in the Sims 4 and then I play them for two hours and you get a two hour video of this Sim and whatever I'm able to accomplish in that video is basically that Sim's story. And then in the next video, I move on to another Sim and we get just, you know, a bunch of little short stories basically of Sims. Because I think there's a lot of really long plays of The Sims, but there's not a whole lot of, like, short plays, like, short stories for The Sims. So that was something I thought about, and I have the second half of that Minecraft episode that I filmed on Backburner. It's just sitting in Premiere, waiting for me to finish editing it, and it's, it's like, really funny. Like, I have a great opening to it, and I just, I don't know, for some reason I cannot edit. I think it's just the my brain gets overloaded when I edit and I love the editing that I did on that Minecraft episode. Like I was so happy with it. I just can't bring myself to do another one. There's a lot, there's a lot that goes on in my head and I'm constantly going and I'm constantly like moving and, and falling and, and, you know, thinking and happy and sad and upset and angry and happy again. And Oh God, this year has been an absolute ride. But at the same time, I guess that's what it's about because, you know, and I, I again, I want to say this because a lot of people are like, well, then just don't just ha just don't have a wedding. Like, nah, I want a wedding. Like, I want to get married and I want to have a lot of people there. I'm a people person. Like, I like being in front of people. I like being on stage. I like that kind of thing. Um, I just wish that weddings were not so ridiculously expensive and so stressful. That's it. I just wish that it didn't come with all of the judgment and the people constantly trying to tell you what to do and <sighs> give me five seconds of peace um and yeah it's 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 been an interesting place and uh I'm I'm getting there and we're gonna get through this and then I'm gonna go back to the happy place of recording and doing videos on YouTube and pretending that one day I uh pretending that I don't care about how many views I get and how many comments I get and caring anyway and uh, it's gonna be fun so I don't know. We'll see what I upload. I It might just be some... I, for all I know, I might, like, look at Oblivion and be like, here's a comfort game. It is a comfort game. <laughs> Oblivion and Skyrim are both comfort games. I love the I love the flip out of both of them. Like, I have played Skyrim so many times. It's stupid. Um, So, I mean, it just depends on what, like, pops up as a comfort game. I don't know if these are going to be continuable series. Like, I'm trying to avoid that right now because I can't... I just can't do a schedule. I've lied to myself for long enough on that. Anyways, this vlog has been going on for long enough. I hope you guys, I, I don't, I hope I haven't worried you. I just sort of needed to vent because there's been a lot of feelings about weddings. I am fine. I am more than fine. I am overall a very happy person just dealing with stress and I am a hypochondriac, 100%. Like I haven't been diagnosed by a doctor, but I don't need to be. I'm a hypochondriac. I am the type of person who overthinks everything to an absolute sickness, uh, like an illness degree, and I will absolutely put myself into a hysterical fit over it, and there's nothing wrong. Like, I am 100% the problem. I've done this on Ferris wheels. I've done this with, like, my chest is tight. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. This is it. This is the last moments of my life. Like, have I lived my life the way I want? I've done this. Like, you think I'm joking, but I'm not. I've Those exact thoughts have gone through my head. Is this it? Is this the moment? I've done it. I've ruined my body. This is it. This is the moment where I, like, die. I'm just going to lie here and let it happen. I'm a hypochondriac. <laughs> so, you know. 
Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I promise I'm okay. I'm really grateful to those of you who stuck it out through this whole video and listened to me rant for a really long time. Like, just this this vlog in itself was super therapeutic and very like comforting and I, I feel so much better already like today I had a lot of stress building up because we're getting very close and we still have like a lot of things that we need to do but it really feels like you know it's finally coming <laughs> coming together and I don't know this was very helpful for me so thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you in the next video whatever that is and uh yeah